Hi, and welcome to this quick tool review. This time around, we have a product from Viva that I hope to replace a stand that I've been using for many years, this one right here. This is a pile of junk. I use it as support materials for cutting off on the bandsaw. And uh, I've had this since the early days of woodworking, and it never worked great. The design is horrible. So there's a thumb screw pressing against a vertical shaft to set height. You can't set height accurately, it droops. Looks like we have the uh, shop inspector without her brother here this time. And uh, <laughs> get back to this. Uh, so this stand has always been horrible, but I like the roller because it lets you move stock easily in one direction. So I was hoping to modify this Vivor tool to replace this and be a more effective support because again, this design is just a piece of junk. The bottom has Allen screws pressed against a shaft to keep it centered. This whole thing is slops all over the place. Uh, it was okay in woodworking. It was never great then and it's really inadequate now with heavier metal parts. Inside we should have the tool. They wrapped some extra tape around it, although they didn't use fiber reinforced tape, which might have been a nice touch. This one got a little uh, manhandled in shipping, as everything seems to be this day, especially these days, especially if it's a heavier item. Um, this one's not super heavy, but it is all metal inside. Uh, but it looks like the tool arrived unscathed and assembled. You can see where. It took a pounding inside the box. And they did put some reinforcing cardboard on the side, but not on the bottoms. So maybe they need to add that, but uh, it did arrive, looks like undamaged. The bubble wrap's an interesting touch. Acme threads, cast nut on the top, very heavy duty. I guess that's the 2,500 pound pipe part. Uh, if you're like uh, the sprinkler pipe people on the work on the lot where I normally work, uh, sometimes they put in eight 10 inch pipes and those sections weigh a ton and this would let you uh, accurately set the height without too much difficulty. Uh, they are extremely heavy pieces so you wouldn't want to have to manhandle them around and this uh, sort of solves that problem. All right, so this tool came completely assembled. Some of these fasteners are a little loose for my taste uh, from the factory. They're nylon nuts, so that's not a problem. I can easily tighten those, uh, which I think I will give them a little snug. This is the leg uh, spreading lock. Uh, you don't have to tighten it very much for it to stay in place. It's got a nice handle for transport, which is pretty handy. It's not super heavy, but it's heavy enough that uh, the handle's a nice addition and doesn't seem to get in the way. Uh, this is the column height lock. All right, so looking at this design, it's kind of creative. You have the fine adju height adjust right here with the Acme threaded screw on what looks like something like a one and a quarter inch uh, shaft, although it's probably a metric equivalent. One and a half inch almost, 1.42. So 36 millimeters more or less. That is beefy. So this column adjusts height in two ways, which I think is pretty interesting. So you have the fine adjust here, which is the obvious part, and that's what uh, really caught my attention, because that's a great height adjust method. Uh, the normal method that I had over there, tightening a screw pushing on a column, it deforms the column. You can't make it very tight. If it twists, it drops. Uh, it's just endlessly crappy. This one has a second uh, height adjust, because there's two tubes. So this outer tube, uh, so this, this nut presses on this tube, which uh, goes inside this column. And this washer is used to set height. Isn't that interesting? That is a very simple mechanism, yet uh, pretty effective. There's a fair amount of slop in the tube, but uh, if you're just trying to set height on, on a piece of uh, material, I'm sure it's more than adequate. And then the fine adjust is going to get you there. That is a really creative solution. That's a, like almost a quarter inch thick washer. Uh, interesting design. And then there is, a, there is a threaded handle that pushes on this column to lock this guy in place as well. So if we raise this guy up and tighten this guy here, it's not dropping down uh, on its own without that. But if you're loaded up with 2,500 pounds, you're going to definitely want 
to trust multiple things so that your pipe doesn't come down. I'm going to use it for stocks, so that should not be a problem. Uh, the welds look good on this thing. Uh, like I said, some of these were a little loose, like uh, there's a fair amount of slop in these. I'm going to snug them up a little bit. They did use nylock nuts, which is great because that means that whatever tightness setting you put them at, uh, they should stay there. And that's pretty handy. All right, let's uh, snug these uh, nuts up a little bit and take a further look. All right, so deploying this thing's pretty straightforward. You loosen the uh, leg spreader locking nut and then put it all the way down and tighten it up. It provides a very decent platform. You can raise it up with this bit right here, which is a really creative design in my book. They do have a height limit on it. It's, uh, it's marked way the heck up there. I don't know that I'd want to go that far. You can lock that, double lock that with the hand nut over here. And then you have the fine adjust right here. And while this excels at round materials, it's not as great for flat sheet or, or square stock or rectangular stock. So I am going to find a way to put this roller off the old stand on there. And you'll notice it's threaded onto this vertical shaft here. So I'm gonna remove this guy here and figure out how to add it to that guy over there. Because then this covers any kind of stock and that's much handier. One thing I did notice is that the V itself is not symmetrically centered about the shaft. Uh, it looks like it's a little low on this side and a little high on this side. So in order to get this level on there, I would have to slide this plate a little to the right, which is fine actually, that's not a problem. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld this plate on there, add some screw holes and put the roller base on there and that'll let me uh, control just about any kind of stock. I don't really do a lot of pipe work, so I don't need this V feature specifically. I thought about cutting it off and just welding this plate on directly, uh, but it seems like modifying this plate, since I'm never gonna have super huge amounts of weight, certainly nothing like the 2,500 pound capacity this thing's capable of on here. Uh, so that won't matter at all. And I think I'll just weld this plate on here like this, add two, uh, drill and tap two screw holes and mount the roller on here and I should have a very useful assembly. All right, so here's my final thought. This Vivor pipe stand is an excellent generic stand. If you, even if you don't need it to hold up pipe, it's an extremely well-made, very strong 2,500 pound capacity stand and you can modify it as needed. So if you don't want the V block, you could just cut that off and use the Acme threaded rod to attach to whatever you want. Or you could do what I did and weld a 3 8 inch plate on here, drill and tap the plate to hold this roller. And now I've got a material roller that will help me uh, cut things on my bandsaw that are longer than just a foot or so. So that's pretty fantastic. The stand is really well made, really strong and it's generic. You don't have to use it for what they intended, and it's 70 bucks. It's a deal. I think Viver's got a winner here. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.